I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars franchise seems to be quite expansive, not just with their books, novels, comics, and video games, but also let's not forget about their new Star Wars TV series, both in live action and animated form, and also the new Star Wars trilogy of films, also known as the fourth Star Wars trilogy by Disney and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the one thing about Disney Star Wars is that we do know that Bob Chapek and Bob Iger, the Disney CEOs, if you will, Bob Iger is the temporary Disney CEO, giving Chapek a hand throughout this entire crisis, in order to really bring Disney as a company to a more positive route or a positive destination for the Star Wars fandom, right? So, when we look at Star Wars as a whole, we do know that they're really redefining what Star Wars is going to be. They really want to evolve the Star Wars experience and enhance the experience, both for TV shows and for movies to arrive in the next couple of years over this entire decade. And when we look at Bob Chapek, obviously he's trying to create a new image for himself, a new legacy if you will as the new Disney CEO, and thankfully Kathleen Kennedy no longer has any creative control over any of the existing Star Wars projects in the early development phase, except for the Leslie Headland Star Wars TV series, so just keep that in mind. So, the one thing that I do want to focus on is, of course, the rise of Skywalker, right? We do know that this movie had a lot of issues, both during production and for the box office results, and that, of course, was, you know, a lot of fans not going ahead and seeing the movie or not seeing the movie multiple times. Now with that being said, alright, with Disney involved in over 10 years worth of Star Wars projects, both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are currently trying to reunite the fans by creating more authentic Star Wars material for the fans to enjoy around the world. Now, it's explained that one of the main projects that they are developing is the new Star Wars trilogy. However, the last film of the Skywalker saga, The Rise of Skywalker, had a very messy and shaky production. Many fans have been very curious about what could have been before Kathleen Kennedy stepped in to make dramatic changes to the film. Now, it's noted that Bob Chapek plans to release the JJ cut sometime in 2023 on Disney Plus that will be considered a four hour cut of the film by combining deleted scenes with the existing cut of the film by Disney. A batch of deleted scenes that they aim to include within the JJ cut are the scenes of Matt Smith's role as the Dark Acolyte possessed by the spirit of Emperor Palpatine in the film. Now, those scenes are described to be a part of the JJ cut. It's described that they plan to unveil a full-on lightsaber duel between the Dark Acolyte, Kylo Ren, and even Rey in the mix to give fans an action-packed scene for the Rise of Skywalker. Now, let me just say this, is that we actually really deserved to have a full-on lightsaber battle between Palpatine, Ben Solo, and Rey, which is something that we just did not get. We only got a little confrontation between the three, and that was basically about it. Now, sure, Rey was able to block the Force Lightning by Palpatine, and that was pretty much the only battle that we really got between Palpatine and an actual Force user in this movie. So, with that being said, of course, not just that, but also the JJ cut is set to include a more involved sequence for when Rey gets help from the Force Ghosts of the past. Originally, the Force Ghosts of Kenobi, Anakin, Yoda, Luke, and Leia, and others were going to be visually seen helping Rey while she is down on the ground, giving her a hand to face Palpatine once more, and that the Force Ghosts were going to be seen as they take down Palpatine once and for all. Again, another thing that a lot of fans wanted to see was the Force Ghost, visually speaking, as opposed to just disembodied voices. Moving on. Now, the JJ cut will include one of the alternate deaths of Palpatine with Luke and Anakin's Force Ghost dragging him into the netherworld of the Force in an attempt to destroy his spirit once and for all. The scene was said to have been inspired from Star Wars Legends of Palpatine's second and final death, where additionally the four-hour cut of The Rise of Skywalker will also include the flash fights between Rey, Kylo, and Palpatine, revealing the worlds of Mustafar, Tatooine, and even Naboo, during their battle that would be a matrix in a sense between the minds of these characters taking the audience to popular places within the Star Wars franchise that was going to include heavy visual effects 
that would need to be completed over the next couple of years to make all of this possible for the new Star Wars community and for it on Disney+. Plus. Now, the four-hour cut is said to have a darker tone once it's complete in the next couple of years, and that this is all Bob Chapek and Iger's response to the praise for the Snyder Cut set to arrive in 2021 for Disney+. Plus. Disney sees this as a great opportunity to engage with the fans and to also gain more revenue on Disney+, Plus, to also enhance the Star Wars experience for the fandom around the world. Now, like I've said before in the past, we're a long ways off from this JJ cut arriving on Disney+, Plus, and that is the only downer about all of this, is that it's going to take a while for it to arrive and for it to actually be made and put together. Look at the Snyder Cut, it took a very long time for that to actually come into fruition. So with that being said guys, you know, drop a comment below, let me know think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.